Okay, so I was gonna do a whole thing about Crisis on Infinite Earths, but as I've said before, DC Comics are not my forte, and in the process of doing research I realized... Yeah, there's too many weird characters and weird bits involved for me to succinctly explain this event, even if I broke it up into several short videos, so I left the series alone for a bit. But, as luck would have it, James Gunn finally unveiled the first part of his and Peter Safran's plan slate for the DCU just this week. And while I'm saving most of the breakdown for this week's Under the Bridge, there is one character who I think hits that perfect cross-section of I know enough about them to actually have something to say, and everyone else might not know enough about the character that it's actually worth talking about them. And that would be Booster Gold, who will be making his DCU debut in an HBO Max series. Long and short of it, Booster Gold is a loser from the 25th century who stole a bunch of gadgets from the Metropolis Space Museum and traveled back in time to the present day so he could be a superhero for fun and profit. In fact, he's such a loser, he couldn't even get his own superhero name right. He was originally going to call himself Gold Star, but got stuck with the name Booster Gold after accidentally mixing up Gold Star and his old football nickname Booster in front of President Reagan. Yes, that President Reagan. By and large, a more comedic character. He's been best friends with Blue Beetle. N not the one getting his own movie, though, the, the guy before him. A member of the Justice League International. That's the funny one that wasn't based out of Detroit. And has been revealed to be the father, eventually, of Time Master Rip Hunter who you might recognize from the CW Arrowverse show, Legends of Tomorrow. He's even gone to some genuine character development, and transformed from a sponsorship-hungry glory hound to a genuine protector of Earth and the time stream. Who everyone still thinks is a sponsorship-hungry glory hound, either because proof of his genuine heroism keeps getting erased, like in that one Justice League Unlimited episode, or because it's safer that he pretends to be a moron so no other time travelers try to mess with his history. He and Rip even discovered the post-crisis multiverse. And now it's time for my favorite part of talking DC characters, how reboots made things confusing. Originally, when Flashpoint, the timeline-changing event that kickstarted the New 52, happened, Booster Gold was immune to the time stream's alterations, and it was heavily implied that the reboot version of himself, who went on to help start the New 52's Justice League International, only to disappear when the book was cancelled, was the same as the previous one. Oh, and I mean, literally disappeared. A future version of himself showed up, then they both vanished from existence upon realizing that Superman and Wonder Woman were dating, because for every good idea the New 52 had, there were probably five or more bad ones. As we'd come to find out during the 2015 event Convergence, what we thought was a future version of Booster Gold was actually the original pre-Flashpoint Booster, who eventually transformed into the latest iteration of a powerful time manipulator known as Wave Rider, and sent his New 52 self, among others, back to where they came from. At which point, everything went back to making sense, and DC would never overcomplicate their multiverse again. Oh, also, he's got a little robot buddy to look up information for him named Skeets. So that's neat. 